Hey, Corey here with the Mentored Engineer. Hey, it's been a long time since I've been out on the roller coaster doing videos for you. So, so I want to tell you about two projects that I'm going to be launching on the greatest roller coaster in my backyard. And that is, first of all, we are going to do a loose cart for this where you are in a prone position, face down, looking up the roller coaster. Uh, I think that's going to be cool. Uh, but we're going to have a cart. And the cool thing I realized is most of the parts on here I can reuse. Uh, so, for example, all I've got to do is pull out this bolt right here and switch out this frame that I'm, I'm sitting on. There's a bolt in the front, a bolt in the back. And, hey, I've got a whole new cart, but all this wheel stuff that I did, just carry it over. It's going to be cool. Hey, if you like what you see so far, please be sure to smash that like button and subscribe and click that notification bell so I can annoy you at least once a week. The second thing is what we're going to talk about today, and that is our lift launch hill. Now, why do I say a lift launch hill? Well, it's not really either. So, the way that this thing is constructed, I, I constructed it to be non-powered. And what I, the solution that I've come up with is... We're going to have a lift hill at lift hill speeds, uh, basically six to ten feet per second. So not not quite launch speeds, uh, but it's not lifting you all the way up. So uh, if you think about uh, lightning rod at Dollywood, you're going to go up. Uh, and then as you go up, you kind of lose some speed as you go over the top. You're not going over at full speed that you were launching up. So you're, there'll be a, a coasting factor associated with this. Uh, and that's simply because we can't power all the way up. We're going to power 80%, 90%, something like that. Uh, and have that go at a good speed so that, one, we're not uh, putting a lot of extra stress on the ride. And two, uh, just the physicality of how we built this and how we're adapting it to have a lift launch system. So my first thought was, hey, let's go the way that Will uh, of London did and we're going to make this thing uh, a pneumatic launch with a uh, giant homemade cylinder. I really wanted to go with that system, but I couldn't for a couple reasons. First, uh, I couldn't figure out how to make the cylinder uh, strong enough and, and I'll say inexpensive enough and long enough. I've got uh, nearly 40 feet of, of lift that I have to go up and I could only get about 20 feet of stroke maximum before I started running into uh, problems and basically where am I going to get you know a 30 feet or a 40 foot piece of uh, PVC pipe. Uh, the other problem is with uh, the amount of uh, compressed air it would probably be between three and five minutes that I would have to charge up for each one and you know who wants to wait around five minutes for a seven second ride. So as much as I wanted to do that, and I may still do that on a future roller coaster. Okay, so what are my options then? So the next option is, hey, let's get a chain lift in here. And chain lifts, well proven, uh, kind of boring though. I wanted to make this exciting. Uh, but you know, chain lifts have um, individual roller chain links, and then you'll have a chain dog that will come in in between those two, and the chain will just connect and disconnect to the car uh, easily. Uh, the chain is expensive. I was looking online and for the amount of feet I need, uh, it was going to be several hundred dollars just for that. Plus I need something to power with and just wasn't going there at this point. Hey, maybe if more people buy the course, I'll do that. But I think what I'm going to end up with is something even cooler. So yeah. I've got this rope sitting around at my house and this rope here that I'm already using for the lift hill is a perfect candidate for using a cable drive system. So I already have tons of rope sitting around and I've got this rope right here which is a perfect candidate. It's already got this eye that will fit right here on the lift hill hook that I can uh, run around a let's just say a string of, of pulleys. Uh, if I have a pulley at the top, a pulley somewhere down here and I can just go ahead and connect this to it. Bam! Pull yourself right up. Uh, so that, I think that's the solution we're going for. It's free. I already have it right here. Look at that. 
Uh, and then pulleys are cheap. I've already got three pulleys I'm using on this. So if I have to buy another couple more, um, great. Now the question is, how do we drive it? And if I take this uh, pulley right here, I can wrap it around this uh, V-Groove pulley that I have off an old piece of machinery that I no longer uh, need working. And the nice thing about V-Groove pulleys is that as you put tension on them, they, they continuously uh, pull into the groove, which makes the friction uh, factor go up in between. It's not just the same, you know, if I just have it loosely pulled here, uh, it does not take much uh, force right there. But if I put just a little bit of pressure, it suddenly got hard. So I don't need much tension in this rope to make a big difference here. Now, another cool thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run it over the pulley twice. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wrap it over the pulley and come down and have another pulley down here at a fixed distance and then wrap it over the next section. And the reason I do this, so here's the pulley, fictitious pulley, believe me, it's there. Um, you know, if the motor's spinning and pulling the rope this way, I actually get two 180 degree pulls around this as opposed to just one. If I wrapped it over all four shivs, I can actually get two full turns of engagement around this. Uh, now, keep in mind that all these shivs have to be the same size for this to work right, otherwise you'll be pulling at different speeds, uh, which, can, which will cause problems, trust me. So one cool thing that I considered but I'm not going to do is having two drive pulleys. And this would be having this one drive, and then where this pulley is, have another one uh, of this, and have them both connected to each other via another uh, V-belt or something of that nature, and allow them to pull each other. Now, I think that would be cool. I just don't think it's necessary. So we're just going to have it wrap around the pulley twice. I think that'll be enough uh, friction to do our launch and have good results. Now let's talk about power. Yes, power. <laughs> All right, power is important here. We need enough power to get us up there and we gotta coast the last little bit, so it's gotta get us there. Now there's a balance between having uh, the right amount of power and having too much power or being underpowered. So what I've done is I've gotten a five horsepower gas engine. So the next episode is gonna be on how we're gonna power this, control the motion, and our drive system.